What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new edition of My Damn Thoughts, and we're breaking down a pretty damn good wave here today, man. WWE Elite Series 104 getting in the house here, My Damn Thoughts. I mean, it seems like Elite 100 was yesterday, and then ever since then, Elite 101, 102, 103, 104, just getting pumped out constantly. We're going to see Elite 105 in just days away. We're days away from seeing Elite Series 105 from Mattel. And then we're gonna, I'm sure you guys know, it feels like to me at least, you Usually when San Diego Comic-Con hits, figures just start rolling to your door. Just like, bam, bam, bam. Or they hit right before. And that's kind of what we're seeing now. I mean, I can think of four Ultimate Edition reviews that are coming to the channel very, very soon. And... I know of more to come, but I guess that's what happens when they show you 36 Ultimate Editions at WrestleMania weekend, but nonetheless, we're diving into Elite 104, man. This is My Damn Thoughts, where we take an entire WWE Elite wave, we take an entire AEW Unrivaled wave, or just some a thought that I have, and I make a video about that said wave or thought, and we discuss it here on the channel. Of course, we have our categories we're going to run through, we're going to rank this set, and it should be a fun time, so let's shut the hell up and dive into My Damn Thoughts for WWE Elite Series 104. Now, we always start these things off with my first thoughts, and my first thoughts on Elite 104 were, damn, this solo skinny. That's literally all I could think about. All I could think about was, yeah, we're getting this guy, and yeah, we're getting that guy, and we get a red AJ Styles. We didn't know about the Sin Cara torso. We were getting a red AJ Styles. I, just a little, like, we're on this road about Solo Sokoa. I'm going to take a pivot road over here, and I'm going to talk about how I have always not given a damn about the AJ Styles figures until the Ultimate, because I always knew that the torso was going to be trash. Now, now that we have the updated torso and the torso that I've been begging them for for years, oh my god, AJ Styles figures are going to go immediately like to the top of my list. It's going to be insane. Nonetheless, talking about Solo Sokoa, he was first shown off with a Daniel Bryan torso, and as soon as I saw that at the Mattel Design Center, I said, absolutely not, bro. This, that, I, no shot. No shot. Elite 104, no shot. All I could think, I couldn't even think about the rest of the wave. All I cared about was the Solo Sokoa, so that was my first thoughts. Now we're going to get into the shelf warmer of the set. Very interesting. Now, there's a couple ways this can go, and there's actually three people that could be up for this. It's not going to be Solo, it's not going to be Rick Steiner, and it's not going to be Braun Breaker. If we're going to have a shelf warmer in this set, it's going to be AJ Styles, Dakota Kai, or Drew McIntyre. And I'm going to break this down for you if you guys are unaware. Drew McIntyre figures have shelf form before, even though it is a really good representation of him and everything like that. But we haven't seen one at retail in a minute, so maybe this figure may be hot off the truck. I'm not sure. Women's figures always shelf form more than men's figures. It's just the way of the collecting world. There's a way higher percentage of men that collect or boys, and they're going to collect the men's figures. It's just the way it is. And they're going to want a figure of their favorite wrestler on television, which is going to be your Drew McIntyre's, your John Cena's, your Roman Reigns. So that's just the way it is. It's great. It doesn't matter how damn good the women's figure is. And last but not least, we do have AJ Styles. And AJ Styles, I feel like to the naked eye, he's got that shirt on, right? So the people that are going down that aisle, they're not going to know about that Sin Cara torso. So he's got the rubber shirt on, and AJ Styles figures always shelf warm for whatever reason. Could it be the body mold? Maybe. It made the figure less appealing to the eye for sure. So, I mean, that's totally a plausibility as well. So I think it'll be one of these three. If I had to bet my money on it, ooh, this is tough. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add the Dakota Kai. I felt like she wasn't going to be the shelf warmer because remember her Royal Rumble Elite? Her Royal Rumble Elite was very sought after. And that figure was very hard to come by. So much to the fact, like, I, I could see that figure in, like, Greatest Hits Series 9 being in that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was very weird and wishy-washy on getting put at retail. So I could see this Dakota Kai flying off shelves. That that was my last point that I forgot to mention. So women's figures do usually shelf warm. But in the case of the Dakota Kai, I think Drew and AJ have a bigger shelf warming chance and so I went with those guys as the shelf warmers in this set. All right, stacking them back up here, Brad. Let's get into our next category. It is going to be the hottest figure in the set, which is the opposite of the shelf warmer. Even though hottest and shelf warmer kind of go hand in hand, you know what I mean. The hottest figure in the set, I went with Solo Sokoa. I mean, this guy's going to be, like, it's between him and Rick Steiner, I think. But I think the Solo Sokoa, if people, it's going to have the shirt on and the packaging. I don't think people are going to look add it that much and say, you know what, I'm not buying that. Look at that body. And first, he's covered by the towel. He's covered by the shirt. People are going to buy this. And yeah, they, they just are, man. They just are. And with the shirt on, it's not that bad, but I, I, <laughs> I still think he's too skinny and that's just the bottom line. Figure could be so much better. And so I still think he's going to be the hottest figure in the set though. And that Samoan spike hand really completes it. Look at that right there. Next up, we have the chase in the set and that is going to be Braun Breaker. As you guys know, we have the pink version and then we have the yellow version. For me, the pink is superior. I like the pink Braun Breaker attire better. I just like pink and black. They go so well together. I, I love pink. You guys know that. You see me out 
and about, I'm going to probably have some pink on. I just love pink, so I represent it in the channel. I like zebra print, all these different things, so I wanted to put that all together, and so that didn't got nothing to do with Braun Breaker, but it's got the pink in there, and you got the yellow, so I went with the team pink over the team yellow. You guys can let me know if you like to chase better over there. Next up is the best head sculpt. Now, this is kind of weird. I think Solo has a decent head sculpt. I think that, I think it's a good representation of Solo in the face. We have the Clay Thompson Braun Breaker head sculpt. We have the Dakota Kai that's making a weird face. The Rick Steiner isn't trash, and then we've seen the Drew McIntyre before, and we've seen the AJ Styles before, but I guess all things considered, ooh, this is tough. I don't typically like to put head sculpts we've seen before in this category. Like, if you, if you have a repeat head sculpt from the past, I don't like to include you, so I'm not going to do that here today. But if we're breaking down all the new head sculpts, Braun Breaker, Solo, Dakota Kai, and Rick, because I feel like the Braun Breaker is not bad, but it looks like Clay Thompson. The Dakota Kai is not bad, but it's kind of a derpy face. The Rick Steiner isn't perfection, so I guess I'm going with Solo. I guess I'm going to roll with the Solo figure having the best head sculpt. If we're not counting, like, old head sculpts, like the AJ and the Drew are pretty damn perfect, and they updated the AJ Styles head sculpt with the new skin tone. Oh, you know, that's the Ultimate Edition head sculpt. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to roll with Solo, man. Next up, we're getting into the best articulation in the set. That is going to go to Braun Breaker, man. This figure right here feels immaculate in hand. He can do all the poses you need. He's buttery smooth. He's got ball joints, the Dolph Ziggler style legs. This guy's going to get the jobs done, man. He's going to get the jobs done. Rick Steiner's on the same exact formula, so I guess technically you could give it to him as well, but I'm rolling with Braun. I guess when you tie an articulation, you got to go with the figure you like more, and I think I like the Braun just a little bit more than the Rick Steiner, and so there, therefore I'm going with uh, Braun Breaker is the best articulation and then the worst articulation is going to be solo or dakota kai you guys know that dakota kai or women's figures just don't have the articulation that the men's do they've came a long way but at the end of the day their ab crunch is nowhere near where the men's are at even though they have improved them drastically in other areas and then uh these short legs are super stiff man for this solo sokoa super stiff pinless legs but uh yeah he's just so damn stiff he is not buttery smooth so i think i go with dakota because i think solo can pose around just a little bit more but i'd go with with Dakota with the worst articulation. But if you want to go female figure, male figure, Solo's the worst and Dakota's the worst. And then we're getting into the best accessory in the set. And this one's pretty damn easy, man. There was not a lot of good accessories in this set. But one thing we did like was Solo Sokoa's t-shirt. So that just kind of goes to show, man. This figure had a great head sculpt. This figure had a great accessory. But all the cons and the body proportions really hurt this figure in the long run. And I love this shirt, right? No Velcro. You got the graphics on the front and back. I think this is going to be the future foundation and standard for Mattel. So that'll be really nice to see, but I think Solo has the best accessory. Well, it wasn't even particularly close. You had the NXT God in heaven. No. Oh, dude, if that would have knocked over my background, like, completely, I'd have completely left the world. You know what I'm saying? But getting back into it, I don't even remember what the hell I was saying. But now it's time to rank this set. So I'm going to take these guys, get them the hell out of here, and then we're going to rank this set from worst to best. And my camera is completely out of line. Jesus in hell heaven, I apologize. Nonetheless, let's get into our figure ranking for Elite Series 104. Now, if you guys are wondering about the criteria for the ranking, you have a bunch of different things coming into account here. You have excitement level for the figure. You have feel in hand. You have likeness to the character on my television. You have poseability. Accessories do play a role. Likeness to the face. You know, head sculpt matters. There are a lot of things coming into play here. And this actually was a lot tougher ranking than I, I thought it would be. But let's dive into it, shall we? Coming in at the bottom of the ranking, man, Man, I mean, this is kind of wild, and I'm going to have to, like, just talk you through it. And you may not agree with me, but maybe you do agree or whatever, man. You guys can let me know down below, man. And remember, it's not the correct ranking, it's just my ranking. And for my ranking, man, number six is going to be Solo, man. I don't know how you can really put him any higher than this. I think you could have some arguments, and there are arguments to be made. Head sculpt solid, accessory is great. With the shirt on, he doesn't look that bad. But these legs are way too skinny for Solo. This torso does not fit Solo. And people say it's an NXT Solo. He still had a little bit of weight to him in NXT. And while I love Solo, the character, and everything about the bloodline, man... I was heavily disappointed in this figure, and I think it could just be so much better. And so for that, those reasons, he's going to come in at the bottom. But beating him out just by a little bit is going to be the Elite 104 Drew McIntyre. I mean, this is a perfect representation of Drew McIntyre from head sculpt to the bottom. Yes, it's plain Jane gear. Yes, the head sculpt has been repeated, but it represents the character pretty damn perfect. He moves around well. He has double jointed arms. He has a, It's a good attire, as plain Jane as it is, but it's still a great representation 
addition to Drew McIntyre. Maybe I wasn't the most excited for the figure, but once I found out that this figure wasn't changing, my excitement level plummeted. So I'm just I'm just being real there, man. You guys can let me know what you think there. These guys could possibly switch given on the day, but we have to address the proportionate problems here between real life solo and this action figure solo. Coming in at number four for me is going to be Rick Steiner. Just not my favorite portrayal of the character. I do like a lot of the things going on with the figure, but it's just not my favorite portrayal of the character. I like the figure. I also don't think the body proportions really represent Rick to a T. I think they could have done a different formula than Braun Breaker, but I understand that they overcompensate and they, they make you look way better than you actually do usually as far as like jacked and chiseled and muscles and stuff like that. It's an action figure. You like a video game. They're going to overemphasize that and overexpose it. Number three for me is going to be the Dakota Kai figure. I was super excited for it because it's an updated Dakota Kai. I also love that gear. I like the tattoos, the pink hair, black and pink. You guys know that's straight to the whole heart for me. And I really like Dakota Kai, so there is that. And then coming in at number two and one, I went with Braun Breaker at number two and the phenomenal AJ Styles at number one, man. I love that they actually listened and went with the Sin Cara Torso. That is a fever dream that they even listened to me on that. Or, it, you know, it, like if something got through, you know what I mean? I don't know what it was exactly or who was out there, but getting that change to a figure and a character was so good because of how well this looks and represents AJ Styles. Now, the rest of his figure elite should be phenomenal. They should be so much better than they would have been. And I'm so excited for AJ Styles figures for the future because of this change. And I hope to see stomach hair and chest hair in the future. And just, I, I cannot wait for more AJ Styles figures. I still can't believe they switched that. Like, that is unbelievable in my head. I can't believe they changed it from the Daniel Bryan torso. Just so cool, and I'm so happy I had to put him at number one. Plus, it's a red gear AJ Styles. Plus, it's a great head sculpt. Yeah, it had a rubber shirt, but I think you can throw all that out the damn window when you get this formula, you get this attire, you get this head sculpt. Beautiful looking AJ Styles, and I'll have it no other way. But that is pretty much going to wrap up our My Damn Thoughts episode on WWE Elite Series 104. Now, before we get out of here, we got to give a huge shout-out to our patron army and a huge shout-out to Wayne Werewolf for becoming an Extreme Division member or more. Four. Huge shout out to Wayne. Thank you, brother, for becoming a patron. I appreciate you guys so very much. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me all your thoughts down in the comment section below on Elite Series 104, where you think it went wrong. Rank this set, if you will, down in the comment section below. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and get prepared for SDCC. You'll never be